एस चांद प्रेजेंट एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम डू यू नो दैट वेन दी एटम्स अप्रोच वन अनदर अ चेंज इन द पोटेंशियल एनर्जी अकर्स एंड the atoms have to move through a saddle point before a bond can form hello students i am dr upasna and in this lecture we will be covering the potential energy surfaces when the atoms approach one another we will study the formation of h3 or h2f or hcn where the these three atoms approach one another to know more about this topic you can refer to the book by s chand publishing the link of the ebook is given in the description box the potential energy concept or the potential energy surface is a basically a diagram of potential energy and the reaction coordinate of the system the reaction coordinate means we are measuring the nuclei movement or the coordinates of the nuclei Uh, on uh, axis and one axis is potential energy and the variation of the energy is monitored so that surface is called potential energy surface why are we saying it as a surface let us explain as you know the kinetic molecular theory of gases focuses on molecular collisions it does not talk about the energy path by which the atoms uh, approach one another and then uh, a bond formation takes place a bond is not in uh, general sense is a you know we see it as a line it is not it is not the case we have to we have only the overlapping of the orbitals and the uh, electron density is now localized uh, in uh, the central at the central of the bond so that is what a bond formation is so kinetic theory of gases only talks about mole molecular collisions and not the energy of the uh, interaction what happens is when the two atoms interact uh, in quantum mechanics each atom has a wave function a wave function is made up of electronic part and nuclei part and because of the these are the particles these uh, wave function of the two atoms when they approach one another and when the bond formation takes place uh, overlapping of these wave functions occur uh, when the atoms are uh, you know moving close to one another and not a perfect molecule has formed the intermediate state where the the atoms are approaching and the bond has not yet formed that particular state is called super molecule uh, so after, before so, you know super molecule the atoms were far apart when super molecule formed they are in range and then after some time when the distance decreases the bond formation takes place so according to born oppenheimer approximation now we have uh, you know electrons as well as nuclei according to born oppenheimer approximation the uh, because of the large mass of the nuclei the motion of the nuclei is so is considered negligibly small in comparison to the electrons and then we can segregate or we can write the product of the wave function of electron and wave function of nuclei as a total wave function so this is the advantage that we you know electron part will never interfere with nuclei part and vice versa so this is the born oppenheimer approximation and then we can plot the electronic vibrational energy levels of the system uh, we can calculate from the quantum mechanics uh after understanding this let us understand what are the degrees of freedom suppose i have a molecule consisting of n atoms so there are 3 n total number of coordinates in which it can move or the 3 n are the total number of uh, degrees of freedom that it can possess out of these 3 n degrees of freedom Three degrees of freedoms are because of the translational motion. So, and two degrees of freedoms are because of two or three. If it is a linear molecule, you will have three. Uh, you will have two uh, degrees of freedom of rotation. If it is a non-linear molecule, you will have three. 
So, how many vibrational degrees of freedom are remaining? Uh, if it is a linear molecule, we have 3n minus 5 because 3 translational plus 2 rotational becomes 5. So, remaining degrees of freedom are all vibrational degrees of freedom. And if uh, for non-linear system, you have 3 rotational degrees of freedom, 3 plus 3 becomes 6. Non-linear, the total degrees of freedom for vibrational motion becomes 3n minus 6. 3n minus 5 nuclear coordinates, okay? are required if you are making uh, as a graph of potential energy versus coordinates. So, how many coordinates system you have? 3n minus 5 for linear and for non-linear when the nuclear orientation are not when the nuclear coordinates are not in a straight line we have 3n minus 6. So, once we have understood this let us see a general case. According to Morse potential energy diagram, if I have potential energy on y axis and internuclear distance, internuclear distance on the x axis, and then if I am assuming that uh, initially internuclear, you know you can assume that the two atoms A and B are at infinite distance from one another initially. So, you can take A at the origin and B is at infinite distance. When B approaches A, what happens is when it is approaching the potential energy of the system is uh, you know it is it starts showing up in the potential energy diagram when the attractive forces start playing role. When the attractive forces are there uh, it can be monitored by the negative potential energy so or, or lower potential energy right. So, the potential energy it is a, the attractive forces you know uh, start playing role and attractive forces increases increases as the internuclear distance is decreasing increasing and you will see that after you know it is decreasing decreasing and decreasing and there will be a point where the minima. This is a point which is the, which we say as the exact equilibrium bond length between A and B. Okay, and if you if you you know uh, if the molecule still keeps on uh, approaching A, what happens is so till this point all the attractive forces dominate, and beyond this point, if you still decrease the internuclear distance, what happens is a sudden rise in the potential energy takes place, where the bond is no more or, or the molecule is no more stable and it breaks out. The potential energy of the system increases. This is a general potential energy, Morse potential energy diagram, uh, where only we have considered two atoms. And when they approach, this is how a potential energy diagram looks like. This minima point, this minima point is called, this particular distance is then called REQ, that is equilibrium uh, bond length. How we are applying it to a three atom system? Now what is happening? Uh, let us say I have one atom hydrogen, another atom, let us say I have three hydrogens represented by HA, HB and HC. Only for the explanation part we have uh, done this notation otherwise all are hydrogen atoms. So when these three atoms approach one another there is a change in the potential energy as according to the Morse potential. Now, if I have three atom system, how many uh, coordinates or how many, uh, how many coordinates are there on which potential energy function will depend? We will calculate it from 3 and minus 6 because we do not know whether uh, you know it is, we will calculate it from 3 and minus 6. So, we will have three spatial coordinates on which the system depends, spatial coordinates. So, here uh, the potential energy is a function of three spatial coordinates. Uh, we have, now what are these coordinates? It can be, you know, one atom H A and distance between H A and H B, 
okay so it is let's say the uh, molecule h2 so it is the distance between the h2 molecule this is one parameter second parameter is the approach of hc now hc can you know what is a distance between midpoint of this and hc this is a second parameter distance of hc from the midpoint of hahb bond and the third parameter is the angle is the angle uh, you know from which this is approaching what is the angle from which hc is approaching so we have three spatial coordinates against which i mean potential energy we have to consider the variation against these three coordinates it will be a four dimensional plot which we cannot make so for convenience we are assuming and this is this is what happens also in the real system that we take this angle between the ha hb bond and the vector as 180 degree so we are only assuming that hc is coming towards ha and hb at 180 degree angle and from uh, you know it is not approaching from any other angle so that means now i have what only two parameters are now required to define the system that is two distances r ab and r bc third parameter angle we have ignored or we have assumed it to be 180 degree that is the angle of approach is fixed and the potential energy so now we will draw a three dimensional graph a three dimensional graph of one distance rab another distance internuclear distance rbc and the potential energy and we will see how it behaves this approach is this approach is called collinear approach because all three atoms are approaching collin in a single line single direction in part 1 of this we have covered the potential energy surfaces and on which parameters the potential energy depends how to calculate the coordinates of the system in the second part we will cover how the potential energy surface of h3 system varies and the trajectories of that system and what happens if you replace one hydrogen with fluorine or with two hydrogen atoms with other hetero atoms or carbon and like that to know more about this topic you can refer to the book by s chand publishing the link of the ebook is given in the description box if you found this video interesting please like share and subscribe the s chand academy channel also press the bell icon for future updates thank you of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder